It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. It's time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call it the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So, Bob, you and I have been passing articles back and forth all week. So much information out there. Where do we start? What articles did you find this week would be in the vein of financial propaganda? Well, Rod, there are several studies that came out and came to the same conclusion that the last 65 years of academic research has shown and that money managers, mutual funds, are unable to outperform their underlying index. And they've underperformed this market 10 years in a row. Which is crazy to me to think that anyone could still own a mutual fund in their portfolio. We know all the evidence points to that they're high in fees, they're very tax inefficient because they have to pay out capital gains every year, which means you have tax liabilities every single year. And for a much lower cost, you can own an investment that's done much, much better. Why would anyone own a mutual fund nowadays, Bob? Blows my mind. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it either, Ryan, especially in this last study that came out and showed up so that it's not just the cost of the you know underlying fund. It's because these managers don't diversify enough. They, they concentrate their holdings. And as a result, they, they miss the big winners. And as it turns out, not all stocks go up in a bull market. That's right. It's only very few stocks that actually give you all the return in any given year as opposed to a whole portfolio of stocks. So what we found is that not only are money managers underperforming because they don't diversify enough, what we find is if you are buying individual stocks, you're actually increasing your risk without a chance of having a better return. As it turns out, individual stocks have much more risk than the underlying market and that most stocks you know, over the last 100 years Almost half of those stocks performed in line with a money market fund, right? It's, it comes from a very small handful that actually drives all the great performance that we've gotten in the stock market in our lifetime. Yeah. So the odds of you and I or anyone picking the right stocks that are going to outperform is so small and so slim because we can tell that all these professional money managers can't do it. Why do we think we can do it as individuals? It's just crazy and delusional, Bob. Yeah. Well, it turns out, Ry, that, that they analyze what individuals do with their in their portfolio with their own stock picking is that they end up selling their winners too soon and they end up, you know, holding their losers, you know, hoping to get even. And a lot of it has to do with they think that they're familiar with the company, that there's less risk and it's safer than a company they're unfamiliar with. So it's a matter of, you know, deceiving yourself where the academic research shows that most individual stocks underperform. And I think that's one of the reasons why one of the other articles we had flying back and forth this week is for the first time, exchange traded funds have more money under management than actively managed funds. And the reason being, Bob, is because the performance has been so much better. And one of the quotes I thought was great because there's still over $4 trillion in mutual funds. So one of the article quotes was, there's still too many people getting ripped off by high cost active management. So even though we know mutual funds aren't a good deal, we still own them. Yeah, you know, Ry, it's, um, I think it's a matter of not knowing. And, and of course, you and I are responsible for almost half of that $4 trillion going into index funds over the last 10 years. You know, of course, it's only a joke. But, you know, we did have, uh, <laughs> we have led the pack on that strategy, you know, as a firm. But it's just, I think it's just a matter of people not knowing. Because when you look at your statement, it just says you own XYZ fund. It doesn't say, oh, by the way, you're paying 1%, 2 or 3% in fees every year. You know that we're not telling you about. It's it's buried deep in the prospectus, so it's really not the investor's fault. It's really not, and I think right now, since we're getting close to the end of the year, you and I always talk about taxes. And one mm -hmm. article we found this week basically said, "2019 capital gain distributions. Are you letting history repeat itself?" And what that means is these mutual funds that you may own right now, there's a good chance they're going to pay capital gains out at the end of the year. Last year, 86 percent of funds actually paid out capital gains something you want to be prepared for ahead of time as opposed to waiting to the end of the year. Just another reason why these can be a real problem owning these mutual funds is these big tax liabilities at the end of the year. 
Again, Ryan, you nailed it on the head. You know, if you have a five hundred thousand dollar portfolio last year, you know, it was a good year in terms of paying out capital gains for mutual funds. That cost you almost fifteen thousand in taxes. You know, I mean, why pay fifteen thousand in taxes when you don't have to? And that's another reason why now is the end of the year, Bob. We talked about this in a couple episodes ago. Is it's a good time to look at what losses you have in your portfolio. It's a good time to do what we call tax loss harvesting. It's a good time to maybe take some of those losses so you can offset any other gains you may unexpectedly have here at the end of the year. The other thing we talk about too, Bob, are those RMDs that have to come out at the end of the year. A lot of that can be given to charity if you're over 70 and a half. So there's a lot of tax strategies right now you can be utilizing that can save you come tax time in April. Actually, Rod, there's not even an instance where someone who is very charitably inclined should be writing that check out of their checkbook if they have to do a required minimum distribution from their retirement plan. If they're over 70 and a half, you can make that contribution directly to the charity from your IRA, and it's not reportable to the IRS, and you don't have to pay any tax on that distribution. It's a much better deal than paying it out of your personal account because, you know, the tax laws have changed and made charitable contributions not as attractive as it was in the past. You know, right, it all comes down to your rightism. You know, money saved in taxes is just as green as the money you make working hard or the returns in your portfolio. So, you know what, let's have your money work for you. It's a brilliant idea. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. If you qualify, here's what you can expect. We're going to look at everything from taxes. Have you optimized your financial plan for taxes? We're going to show you how to save on taxes so it's more money in your pocket, not the government's. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and safeguard your portfolio, protect it for retirement. To see if you qualify, simply text the words free financial review to 844 752 6692. That's the words free financial review and text them to 844 752 6692. See if you qualify for our holistic total financial master plan. Here's this week's spotlight on no pain, no gain. And now, we have a very special guest on the show, my colleague, Bob's colleague, certified financial planner, star of Fox Business, CNBC, (laughs) Yahoo Finance, Michelle McKinnon. Michelle, great to have you on the show this morning. Thanks for joining us. I know you're a busy woman, and it's great when you can uh, hey, make it to the I'm, show. Hey, I'm, I'm excited to be here. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll take that. <laughs> I'm glad you're excited. So this is our Spotlight segment. Every week, we take a real financial plan. We uncover what we call the flaws or pain points, spelled P-A-Y-N-E for the record, so our listeners can avoid the same mistakes with their own planning and investing. You recently worked on a case. Why don't you break it down for us and tell us what you did to help this couple get on their path to financial freedom. Yeah, absolutely. So I worked with this wonderful couple and they came to me. They're really excited about potentially retiring over the next year. And the moment I saw their portfolio, I realized that they, just like a lot of other people, have actually never gotten reinvested after 2008. Yes. And it seems like so long ago. However, you're not alone. I mean, trust me, I see this all the time where... You know, you, you, you took out your money in 2008, 2009, and you just really didn't know when to get back in. Um, and it's scary, and I get it. I think what was very interesting for this particular couple, and they've yep. been through a couple of different financial planners before, but no one really told them that, yes, of course, there's risk in getting into the market, and then therefore the market dropping right after you're getting invested, but there's more risk of not getting enough return to therefore not run out of money. And when I showed them the numbers, particularly for the wife, she was a little younger, she was very healthy. Like if we get 1%, 2% return over the next 30 years, she's gonna run out of money and she's not gonna have enough money to live. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier on the show today. It's the problem with cash right now and interest rates keep coming down. Even if you're getting 2%, which is like the best money market fund in the country, yeah, not even really anymore, right? <laughs> yeah. And you're paying taxes on it. Which, exactly. That stinks. And at that point, you're really not really growing your money at all. And that's a big problem because we're going to live longer. And we might be retired for 20, 30 years. That's the reality of things. So, Michelle, I mean, looking over your analysis, I mean, not only did they keep a lot of money in cash, but even in their retirement accounts, they went into what's called a stable value fund. 
Um, that sounds great, but you know, how's the return been on investments like stable value? Oh, it's horrible. And you, you know, the sad part is when investors go into the stable value, they make an assumption that there's no fees, and there's they also make the yes. assumption that you know it's three percent or two percent, right? And I absolutely have seen stable values that give three percent, four percent, and and that's a different conversation. Unfortunately, this particular stable value was I think one point five. And then there were also some fees in the 401k. So, I mean, they were basically getting 1% for all of their money. And they very much went into the stable value thinking that they could get at least a couple percent. They were floored when I told them it wasn't 3%. And it was just, it's just, it's just sad. <laughs> well, that's why it's always good to know what your expenses actually are because a lot of these, it's kind of an insurance product, these stable value funds. And a lot of times the fees are hidden. We talked about annuities today where a lot of the fees are hidden. So it's important not only to know, like to your point, the cash flow you're getting, but what fees are you paying? Because you got to net that against whatever cash flow you're going to receive. That's a lot of much. That could be a lot of money going into the financial firm's hands, right. not your hands. And particularly with this couple, I think no one really told them that. Again, I want to talk about how there's almost more risk not getting invested yes. than the risk of the markets going down. And I think when you when you think about it in those terms, it's a lot easier to start getting invested. And I certainly didn't expect this client to go, you know, 80% in the market and and you don't need to, right? You can start off small, you can work your way back into the markets. However, sitting on the sidelines, particularly if you have a spouse, a healthy spouse that could live another 40 years, I mean, you're putting her at risk or him at risk. Well, you know what, Michelle, I think that the beauty of the analysis, you know, up till having these types of tools where you can demonstrate the impacts of inflation and the impact of less income, it's always been our words, you know, against their fear. And you know, I'm sure they've heard this from other people. Oh, you may run out of money or this may happen. But when you see it in black and white, when you see it, it's your personal portfolio. You see the projections. You know, you see it year by year, and you can see exactly what's going to happen to you or to your spouse if you're gone. Um, this really does crystallize the event, and you know, it makes taking action so easy. But you know, had they ever seen anything like this from anybody else? No. Well, I'm looking that's here, the problem. Michelle. You know, we should. You know, we. I wish everybody in the world could see this analysis <laughs> on their own, so they would know exactly what they're doing. Because most of you are taking too much risk right now, which you don't need to take. Most of you are in good shape, and I don't want to see anybody lose one hour of sleep because you don't know when you can know, and it doesn't cost anything to find out. Preach it, Bob. <laughs> I mean, the other thing is, were they just floored away? Because it looks here like you can increase the income by like almost twenty-five grand a year, and that's not taking. Stock market risk, that's actually just cash flow coming in. It has nothing to do with the markets going up or down. How do they react to that? Because that's real money. Absolutely. And that really helped them fill that income gap, right? So they don't have salaries coming in when they retire. All they're going to have is Social Security checks. And no shock, Social Security checks are, are not going to cut their lifestyle. And therefore, supplementing their lifestyle with this cash flow increase, I mean, the projections look so much better. Yeah. Well done, as Bob likes to say, Michelle, another financial masterpiece. <laughs> Thank you. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one -on -one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free. And you can download it right now by texting the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's texting the word bullish to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts. Just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple, common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. Or check out the show notes for the episode at bebullish.com for a link. Thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on this show, check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting bebullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, be bullish.
Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.